Hi, this is Anil Bharatiya and welcome to TFR Insights. Uh, what is the significance, relevance or importance of VMs in today's cloud native world where almost everything is containerized? We are talking about functional service. We are talking about stateless workloads. So to discuss not only the importance of uh, virtualization, but also the whole landscape, today we have with us Olivier Lambert, your CEO of Wits SES. First of all, Olivier, thanks for coming to the show. Tell us a bit about the company itself. What do you guys do? I'm running a company called Vates, and Vates is a company doing uh, mainly creating software in specialized in virtualization. So uh, in short, we are building two products, uh, Zanarchestra and XCPNG. Uh, the first one is the web UI to manage your virtual machines running on Zen server or XCPNG. And the second one, uh, XCPNG, is a software. It's a an equivalent, if you like, to VMware, but it's completely open source. As I was saying, you know, the important significance or relevance of virtualization in this cloud native world where everything is getting containerized. Talk about this change of landscape. What is going on in the virtualization space? The landscape uh, somehow changed a lot and didn't really change. So what I've seen uh, during a lot of different conferences and talks, etc., inside this virtualization landscape is that it's evolving for a uh, very practical reason, like, you know, um, hardware is going faster and faster. Uh, there is some new use cases, etc. And as you said, there is a, a very strong, uh, I would say, context uh, around all the containers thing, etc. But what we've seen is that uh, uh, people are really using virtualization since, May, I would say, uh, now, uh, 15 years. So it's something people are used to. And somehow uh, it's here to stay for a lot of reasons. And we are seeing more and more deployments where uh, you have both container and virtualization. So I would say uh, uh, virtualization in, in, in a way is a, a layer that are really still useful for a lot of reasons like security, flexibility, that, that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, and, and I would say it's uh, like the hardware, then you have virtualization and now you have containers, but they are all working together uh, to giving a really nice solution built around all of that. I don't think it's going to be a VM versus containerized world, you know, it will continue to remain a, a mix of both. Yeah, exactly. And, and it makes sense because uh, not everyone got some, you know, uh, requirements to be scalable on, you know, worldwide in one night or that kind of stuff. There are some companies who really need to have container flexibility and have, you know, cloud native apps, and it makes sense. And for them, uh, uh, the I would say the layer on the bottom doesn't really matter. But in fact, they are probably using virtualization without even you know, noticing it or knowing because large cloud providers are also using virtualization behind the scene. But in any case, uh, uh, there are still so many use cases for uh, using uh, new VMs uh, uh, for your data, for uh, your own administration stuff, for your network, for a lot of reasons uh, where virtualization is really, really here to stay. And I would say also, uh, it's now even entering some uh, unexpected worlds like, you know, embed world, automotive, and that kind of things, because it's a convenient way to, you know, segment resources, uh, isolate resources in a really efficient manner with a lot of security that you can't really achieve with containers. So uh, again, uh, there's so many use cases for virtualization, so it won't disappear. What I do see in the market, the landscape is changing. Um, you mentioned um, VMware. Now VMware, you know, while they do have VMware, but they also now own Pivotal, Heptio, and a lot of uh, technologies that are heavily invested in a cloud, oh, sorry, containerized world, you know, Kubernetes and all those things so they, they, there's a mix so so the, the, the chemistry is, is is kind of evolving and changing exactly and, and I think uh, a good answer to those container requirement is to improve the integration between all those tools uh, because they are made to, to really work together because for example uh, uh, as a system administrator you don't have to deal with uh, with uh, directly, you know, if you want to deploy new nodes for your, for example, Kubernetes containers and that and so on, uh, you can just, you know, deploy VMs to to contain them or 
you know, to, to don't have to manage directly the hardware if you are just on top of the hardware. So uh, uh, right now, uh, the I would say the main challenges for virtualization is not to to still be relevant. It's to be secure, to keep the security. And you know, security is something really important nowadays, especially after all the Intel, you know, meltdown, inspect, et cetera, et cetera. So isolation is a really hot topic. So this is also a place where virtualization could be uh, really useful. But uh, in other hand, it's not just about uh, isolation. It's all about flexibility, not having, you know, to rely on really specific hardware, but uh, the, big, the big perk with virtualization is that you are able to use something that's pretty generic. So your teams working on whatever cloud native programs don't have to think about what's the hardware uh, beneath uh, their application. Now let's change the topics for a while and just talk about Vates and the company and the projects. You are, you know, heavily involved with uh, the Gen Project. Tell us a bit about your involvement with the project and the community and the Linux Foundation. XCPNG project was incubated inside the Linux Foundation uh, six months ago, something like that. Um, our goal was to be sure that our efforts to create a really community-built uh, uh, virtualization platform uh, wasn't only an effort made by us, by Vates, uh, because unlike some others' company, uh, uh, we really uh, are doing open source from the start, from the roots. Uh, when we created the company, uh, we've been integrating open source solution. So for us, uh, uh, doing something really in the open source where it is really important. So uh, to give you some example, doing something open source is not just you know putting the code inside GitHub or whatever. Uh, uh, building an open source solution is uh, far more than that. It's having a community and be sure you have people uh, uh, that are contributing to the project that are not just from your your community or your company. So uh, uh, to be really inclusive with people, we decided that being inside the Linux Foundation would be a way to be sure that other people will uh, you know contribute to the project and the project won't be only uh, uh, built and managed by our company. So I would say that the the main reasons to be inside the Linux Foundation is is that. But that's not all because also. What we wanted to do is to build, uh, uh, you know, XCPNG is a virtualization platform. So it means it's not just the hypervisor. The hypervisor is Zen, you know. Uh, Zen is also a Linux Foundation project. So uh, Zen is, you, you could imagine that, at the uh, engine of XCPNG. So for us, it was also a way to build bridges between the Zen community, which is a, a really a great uh, developer community. But uh, sadly, uh, until XCPNG, there wasn't really, uh, I would say, a, a Linux distro bundled with Zen that's really open source and easy to use. So that's exactly the goal of XCPNG. It's to bring a, a user community because it's pretty simple to use and to install and, and make them, you know, uh, uh, work together with the developer community because it's really great when you have your users talking to the developers. So for us, it's a way to make uh, uh, bridges between those two communities. What kind of community is it? Because when we talk about open source community, there is no single community. There are communities, and and if within within yeah. Also, the community is is comprises of users, you know, uh, vendors. Uh, so it's it's less of a community. It's more of an ecosystem where you have users who just consume the project. There are vendors who try to commercialize the projects, and then there are you know developers that big companies uh, allocate just for the sake of ecosystem because they are leveraging, they, they may not offer direct solutions, but they are leveraging a lot of things on top of that. So talk a bit about the community aspect of it. As you said, it's more an ecosystem than uh, one community. So you're right. So so I would say that right now, the uh, growing the ecosystem is one of our priority and also be part of the Linux Foundation is one step further to do that. So the first community that we, we we bring to the project was really the user community from I would say home labbers, you know, people playing with their server inside their oh, their home, but also companies using XCPNG at scale, uh, for example, with more than one thousand physical machines. So uh, all those people are what I would say the uh, the users community, and they are all you know helping each other, discussing each other, and that's really great. But as you said, it's a community, not an ecosystem. So we started to work more as an ecosystem in the way that 
Uh, for example, when we are going to uh, a Zen Summit, uh, for example, there is every year Zen Summit. We are a sponsor for that kind of events. And we are, you know, discussing with a lot of companies using Zen itself uh, as an engine inside their company. So, you know, there's Citrix, uh, uh, Amazon with AWS, uh, uh, so many companies using Zen at large scale. So it's really interesting to also, uh, you know, exchange uh, your feedback about using Zen on the field. But also we are directly working with others' company to, to have more integration of their uh, solution, their open source products directly inside XCPNG. So to give you an example, uh, we are working with uh, a storage company called Linbits. Uh, it's a company who've made a DRBD uh, program, which is a, a block replication uh, uh, system. We are working with some open source distro, for example, uh, VYOS and that kind of thing. So that's really great, you know, to try to go further and try to, I would say, federate people around the idea that uh, an open source solution could be really easy to use, could be turnkey. And, and I think uh, this is this vision is really shared by a lot of projects. And because we are a virtualization platform, we can run you know anything on top of it. And for us, this is a great opportunity to build this ecosystem of you know different distros or uh, entities and companies to help to work to get a better integrated solution or you know better secure solution etc do you also have plans kind of to to either leverage or build some your own uh, open source uh, cloud native technologies i think we are more working in a way uh, that doing um, i would say partnership or building the ecosystem with big you know hosting vendors so I, I can give you names right now, but uh, we are working to be, uh, you know, as uh, a distro available from large, you know, um, I would say several providers. And also we have some, uh, you know, services uh, on xcpng.com slash cloud, if I remember correctly, uh, where we can, you know, uh, get the hardware for you, uh, set up everything for you, and you just have, you know, the keys of the system that's just up and running. So we are preparing for that kind of things, but uh, our core business is to be a software editor. So that's why for us, it, it makes sense, you know, to, to partner with some integrators or, you know, hosting providers. Because uh, um, you, you may know that uh, even if there is the big, you know, public cloud uh, uh, actors like AWS or, or, or Microsoft or Google, uh, uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, people asking for, you know, having space to host whatever it's their own hardware or uh, an integrated hardware. But, you know, a uh, data center, uh, uh, I would say, uh, uh, run to be able to build the, the most, the biggest number of data center in one year, there's so many companies on tracks doing that. So it means that it's not only big cloud providers that are required to do the future of the IT. It's also all the other company who want to do that, but in a more private way, I would say. Oliver, thank you so much for taking the time out today and uh, sitting down here and talking to me about the how the whole landscape is changing, about VMs and containers and all, how these two technologies will continue to coexist despite all those things that, hey, DAX is going away and why we always hear that but that is not what reality happens because sometimes we always chase the the shiny object in the market but i i i look forward to talk to you again uh, because you know you have a lot of you know exciting projects in your pipeline and i would love to talk to you again thank you thank you